Good day everyone. I am Elsa Sabas, BS Math 4th year, your discussion for tonight. My topic is about utilizing application for teaching and learning. At the end of this learning episode, I must be able to select applications that are most appropriate to the different aspects of the teaching learning process to address learning goals. Show skills in the positive use of application for student engagement in teaching and learning. Demonstrate positive attitudes towards the use of technology tools. Use professional reflection and learning to improve practice. So what is application? Application is a kind of software that can be installed in various gadgets, desktop, laptop, smartphone, and a tablet. There are thousands of apps, each with, with this specific function. A wide range of function includes ordering foods, getting a ride, getting a date, doing bank transaction, and even praying and meditating. Now, there are those that are directly useful for teaching and learning, which can be referred to as an educational application, whether the class is face-to-face, -face, blended, or fully online, a vast number of applications can truly enhance the teaching and learning process. Application for student clear doubts anytime and anywhere. Also, application can be used by any age group of students all over the world. Generally, application like Quora can be used in increased interaction between teacher and students. Applications have been developed to encourage students of all ages to learn and to explore more in the field and generate more interest to make learning fun. The judicious use of application can make the teaching learning process more effective, efficient, and equally important more fun and satisfying for both the teacher and the students. The teacher can use application in different stages of planning, preparation, implementation, and assessment. Teachers can use application to prepare high-impact presentation that help them deliver content. Also, teachers use apps to motivate students to participate, resulting in greater and more enjoyable engagement. Also, application used to access, document, and report performance and achievement. It is most likely that we have experienced learning using many of these apps as a student. The most popular ones are Canva, Kahoot, Mintimeter, Jumpboard, Slido, Google Slide, Google Docs, Flipgrid, and etc. Some apps are for specific levels and learning areas. For example, there are hundreds of apps for preschools and kindergartens, like storybooks, alphabet and numbers apps, and etc. At the same time, there are apps for math, reading, science for primary, intermediate and secondary, or even collegiate levels. An excellent guide for choosing application to enhance teaching and learning is the Pedagogy Will Model, created under the leadership of Dr. Alan Carrington. According to Alan Carrington's Pedagogy Will Model, teachers have an at hand reference that ties up to specific learning outcomes directly connected to modern pedagogies and theories. They can easily set with the wheel during lesson planning to find tools that will best aid their student or use them during class time to extend or deepen learning towards a specific 21st century skills or content area. The connection of theory, practice, and application make the pedagogy wheel an invaluable resource that should be on the wall of every classroom. This model is designed to help educators think systematically 
coherently and with a view to long term. Big picture outcomes about how they use mobile apps in their teaching. The product which you will is about mindsets. It's a way of thinking about digital age education that masses together concern about mobile app features. Learning transformation, motivation, cognitive development, and long-term learning objectives. It is an everyday device that can be readily used by everyday teachers. It can be applied to everything from curriculum planning and development writing learning objectives and designing centered activities. The idea is for the users to respond to the challenges that the will present for teaching practices and to ask themselves the tall question about their choices and methods. The underlying principle of the pedagogy will is that it is the pedagogy that should determine our educational use of apps it is all very well to come across an exciting new application and think to yourself. This is the picture of the pedagogy wheel that has exciting application that can be used to teaching and learning. And I have a short video presentation that help us to use this model. Thanks for tuning into this video. Today, I'm going to talk about the pedagogy wheel, and you will see an example of this, or the live version, attached to this more. But I'd like to talk a little bit about these things that are on this wheel. So this wheel is an intersection between the SAMR model, which is substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition, and the Bloom's Taxonomy, which is remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So it's an intersection of these two things. And um, this is really neat for technology purposes. It gives you some information, like what is substitution? So substitution on this wheel is about here. It's this first section and a little bit of this. Substitution, remember, is just a substitution for something um, that, like, for example, a substitution could be instead of having a paper worksheet, you're using the technology to substitute uh, for the worksheet, such as in Google Classroom. Um, but there's no real change. The next area is augmentation. So you're substituting, but with some kind of improvement, so something like OneNote or something like um, Khan Academy here. And so when you click on these links up here, they would open up to a page to the Google Play Store and then you can install these as an app. Um, that is kind of, that is the purpose of this wheel is to be an app. However, I will tell you that everyone that I have clicked on also opens can open up to a web page and so you can just use it through the web page you don't necessarily need an app but again going back to this wheel it tells you the activities you can use in that area and also the action verbs so just some really great information especially action verbs when you're talking about writing content and language objectives for SIA um, modification this is where you're redesigning the task in a significant way. And so things like Google Maps, if you use that. Um, also Luminosity. These are Luminosity, if you've never done any work with that, that is really a great place to just do some brain work, memory skills, things like that. Things that make you think logically outside. Um, so here is that modification. And then again, modification would be about halfway through here, but you have redefinition um, as part of the SAMR model. So new tasks that previously were inconceivable things. Um, so things like hit collage, where the students are putting things together and creating something new. Or something that I personally really like is explain everything. Kids are creating a page where they're explaining it in a different way. And it's not just a they're creating something brand new, something that would not be possible to do. 
our podcasts that happen at the high school. Those are things that are part of this redefinition. They're making something completely brand new. So a lot of this storytelling, it's all a lot related to the creation of things. And so just a a resource here for you to help you integrate your technology in a deeper way. Um, And I appreciate that you take time to watch this today. I would love to meet with you individually and work on something in your classroom and, and help you expand this even more. I hope that you find this is a great resource and one final word on all of this. If you have not watched The Puzzle of Motivation by Dan Pink, it's a TED Talk. It's really amazing uh, what he talks about. He talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And really, he's talking about motivation of a business, but this also applies to motivation of students. If we give them autonomy, if they feel a level of mastery and they have a, a bigger purpose for why they're doing that math work or why they're reading that story, um, that will help them connect and stay more engaged. And that's number one for me as a instructional coach for technology is I want your students engaged. Not, not so much just that they're with you, but I want them deeply with you because we only have so much time with our students and they need to learn as much as they can so they have a good foundation for their future where they're going to change the world. So thank you for tuning in and please let me know how more how else I can support you. The model aligns the application to five essential levels. First is the attributes, motivation, new taxonomy, educational technology, and SAMR. When we say attributes in this model, they involve thinking about the type of people that emerge from our educational programs, their ethics, responsibility, and citizenship. For example, in their employability in our current and future society. Teachers must more constantly revisit the way in which their programs are contributing to the development of this attribute. The motivation is vital to achieving the most effective learning outcomes. When we say Bloom's taxonomy, it's really a way of helping teachers design learning objectives that require higher order thinking. We start with remembering and understanding, which is the easiest category to serve with objectives but produces the least effective outcomes in achieving transformation. The technology enhancement serves your pedagogy. When you choose any app or technology, remember to apply the application selection criteria. The model only suggests apps that can support the learning objectives and activities at the time of publishing. The SAMR model developed by Rob Robin Wentigura, standing for substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. It is a framework that assess teacher to access the degree to which digitally empowered learning and teaching. Moving behind what can be taught using analog technologies. It is extremely useful when considering how you are going to use the technologies you have chosen. Lastly, the art of choosing application for teachers. First, developmental appropriateness, engagement, instructional design, motivation, and accessibility. Developmental appropriateness is the app's content of appropriate for the intended age group. Does it have an age-appropriate interface? Does the design appeal to the intended level? 
engagement does the app have initiative interface it is use user friendly app open new ways to learn for instructional design the app support teaching goals met student learning expectations Include interactive features that allow for feedback, assessment, and reflection. Motivation is the apps consist inviting and relevant for the intended grade level. Include gaming principles and mod motivating methods. Help students connect learning with their life world or experiences accessibility the app have multiple learning style sets include personalization features include range of levels for a variety of users with different skills levels and lastly my desire to help teachers make good decisions as to how to make the pedagogy drive the technology and not the other way around that led to the birth of the pedagogy wheel. That's all for today. Thank you for listening and good night.